Good afternoon, everybody, and hi. This is a planned live in Jackie Lee's group, um, which is, I'm going to give you, I'm also streaming it into my personal page um, so that I could just do this once and not have to do it again. So I hope that you can see me because I know there's been a few problems with StreamYard getting into Facebook groups. So I've asked Jackie just to give me a thumbs up to let me know on Messenger or let me know on here. Hi. Oh, you can see me then. I've got a hi. Hey, Chris. Nice to see you. So hi, everybody. I can properly introduce myself now. I'm Mandy Nicholson, and I am a creative genius, consultant, artist, and author. And I've been in this group before talking about money mindset. Hi, I've got another hi there, but I can't see names. Um, if you put your name in or you agree to the little StreamYard, um, I'm okay with, with streaming StreamYard. I think it's above in the comments. Um, and then I'll be able to see your name. Otherwise, just type your name in and then I can say hello properly. So I am showing up today, not in money mindset mode, but I am showing up today as Mandy Nicholson, author. And I've perched my book precariously behind me then. So you can see what it is. So Jackie asked me to come along and talk about my book. Now, I've thought long and hard about this over the last few days before coming live into the group about what is the best way to talk about my book. And I think the best way is to talk about what happened to lead me into writing this book called The Life I Won. Now, firstly, I'm gonna start by saying it's the first in a trilogy of books, um, but I'll explain that a little bit later on in a bit more detail. So I was in 2009, I'm going to take you back to 2009. And I want to talk about where I was at that time and where the story comes from that's in the book, because that's the easiest way to, uh, to communicate the, the story, the fictional story that I wrote about in this book, The Life I Won. So I was, ma I was in a marriage, a 13 year marriage, to, and it was my third marriage. I really am very rubbish at marriage, <laughs> better at picking staff than I am at picking husbands. I'm gonna start there. Um, but the first two had been really short. This was 13 years. However, what I didn't realize was that I had been making do and compromising for a long, long time. I didn't know this at the time. We had two children, beautiful children who I loved dearly, two dogs who I also loved dearly, that were, were part of my life. And we lived in this beautiful farmhouse in the middle of the Northumber Northumbrian countryside that honestly could have been extracted from a Turner painting. It was beautiful. We only rented it, but you know, why would you buy anything when you could rent something so beautiful? It was really spacious and old, it was lovely. Um, and, you know, I'd moved around a lot with my job. I was a senior leader at that point, and I'd been headhunted from Summerfield as a divisional executive to b and to join b and as a store manager. And then I'd been headhunted again to go and join IKEA as an assistant manager training to become a general manager, which is a really senior position in what is a global company. Um, so I'd, I'd had this really successful career for so many years, 25 years. Um, it wasn't what I'd always wanted to do because I was an artist at heart. And uh, I'd got onto this treadmill of, treadmill of life that, that I was doing this proper job. So, and everything in my life felt like I was wading through mud. I was in a loveless, really unhappy marriage, but pretending it was okay to my friends and family. I was in a job that no longer inspired me, but I was pretending that was okay to my friends and family. I was unhappy in myself. I was filled with self-loathing, um, overeating, putting weight on and hated myself, but pretending I was okay to my friends and family. So to the outside world, 
I looked like I had this perfect life, this really highly paid job. The it stuck. It stuck. When did it stick, Chris? I'll just wait and uh, see what Chris has to say. Hi, everyone. I've got a hi, everyone. And I've got an it stuck. So let me know where, um, if you can see me now, let me know where I got up to in the story so that I can continue from there and not say all the same things again. Can anybody see me? It's working again. I had this last time I came into this group. It's okay now, right, Chris? Good. I'll just continue from where I was. Okay. Um, so I was, I, I think I was at the, I was in this loveless marriage and pretending everything was okay, a job that no longer fulfilled me, pretending I was okay. I think the only chinks of light in my life at that time were my two children who I absolutely adored and doted on. Somebody never lost me, right? Okay. Um, my two children that I adored and doted on and my two dogs, they were the only chinks of light in my life. But everything else, I was just going through the motions and pretending that everything was okay, filled with self-loathing and happy. Yep, brilliant. I've got okay here, can hear and see you okay. Fantastic, thank you. So filled with this, this, this burning self-loathing of myself and why had I let myself be in this really unhappy marriage and why had I continued to be in this this job that no longer inspired me it took me down to a really dark place where I was just functioning daily I was actually getting up early in the morning and going to this job that didn't fulfill me and pretending and I was really good at pretending I became an expert of building this outer shell of pretense as many women do, I have to say, as many people do, not just women, people. And nobody really guessed how bad it was for me because I was so good at it, so good at pretending. And then this year happened, and it happened in 2009, and I experienced a series of unfortunate events that seemed to happen from nowhere and were relentless. And in hindsight now, I can see that they were not things that I shouldn't have expected. But I think when you're in that place of pretense and things are not right in your life, you're almost blinkered and you go through life blindly and blinkered. Not everybody experiences this. And you know what? I admire those people that don't, that that have really joyful, happy lives and marriages and that, you know, that can go out there and live their life. That's where I am now. But that's taken a lot of hard work, I can tell you. So the book, The Life I Won, the concept came from this series of unfortunate events that happened to me. And it happened over a period of 12 months. And in those 12 months, I was literally stripped of everything that really mattered to me and some things that didn't. But at the time, I didn't know that they didn't matter. Everything, it was like the rug was pulled from underneath me. Everything, one by one, went and lots of things happened in that year. And I don't know how I got through that year, but I did. And I actually ended up from having a six-figure salary a really successful career and being in this 13 year marriage, even though I wasn't happy in it, I ended up at rock bottom 12 months later. And when I say rock bottom, if you compare that to having everything and that idyllic house, I ended up in a council house with 30 pounds in my bank account and a crappy old car and bankrupt and a single mum with the only things that mattered to me, my two children and my two dogs with me. And facing life from that place of rock bottom and looking back, trying to learn from all that had just happened to me, which was relentless and hard to learn from when it happened at such a, a fast speed. It was literally, I caught my breath from one horrendous thing and the next horrendous thing happened. So that's what I actually decided to capture. But in this book, I did not want it to be a book about a series of disasters. 
I wanted the book itself to take you on my journey of the lessons that I learned and how those series of unfortunate events and those relentless things that happened to me took me from feeling like I was in this loveless marriage and feeling miserable and filled with self-loathing and unhappy with my lot in life to rock bottom, but feeling really grateful and forgiving everything and everybody to enable me to move forward. So I captured that 12 months in a fiction base. So I've actually, you know, I've taken the facts, twisted and turned them, changed the timeline a bit and changed the, the, how events happened slightly to make it a work of fiction. And that's the story that I tell in the book that I went from having what appeared to be everything to having nothing. But in actually reaching rock bottom, I realized that I already had everything that really mattered. And the reason that I chose to write the story was because that I knew that there would be other people out there in the world that were feeling even just some of the feelings that I was having at that time, that just going through the motions, the feeling miserable, the being filled with self-loathing and the acceptance of the life that I was living in 2009 versus the life that I ended up with, the life I won. And that's why I called it the life I won. Because in losing, losing everything, I gained this brand new start, this ability to reinvent myself. And that's exactly what I've done. Um, so from 2010, where I ended at rock bottom, I've turned my life around in a big way. And, you know, many of you may have picked me up doing a money mindset course, uh, talking here not that long ago. Um, I've, in the last 10 years, met a truly wonderful man um, and then subsequently lost that man. He died in April of this year. But that hasn't stopped me because what I learned 10 years ago and recognizing that the life I had now was a life that I'd won and I had to make every opportunity count. Um, nothing has stopped me in my tracks from launching my business. I've now got a three book deal with Austin McCauley to republish this book and remarket this book and then write the next two. And the next two are about the life I've created since then. So there's two further books to come out. Um, so that's really why Jackie, Jackie read my book um, and asked me to come on here and just talk about the book itself and where it came from, why I wrote it um, and why I decided to become an author. So I suppose that's the, the other thing, because that story sat with me for 10 years. And I learned lots of lessons in the 10 years following. And, you know, it did teach me a hell of a lot of things but it was full 10 years later before I found the motivation and I suppose the courage. Uh, hi, Chris, I think I've put the links in the above. I've put my, a link to my author page, it's on Amazon. Um, it's called The Life I Won and I've written it under my pen name. So I'm Mandy Nicholson and I've written it under my pen name, which is AJ King, which is my maiden name and there's a reason for that because one of the things that happened to me in that 12 months was that I lost my dad very suddenly, um, very unexpectedly. And I wanted all my writing for the rest of my life to be a tribute to the man that gave me the underlying confidence to be able to bounce back from this. So I think the link is above. I've put three links in there. I've put the link where you can buy the book. It's a link to my author page a link to some free trainings that I do if you're interested in other things that I do. And I think I've put my link tree link in that takes you to all of my pages on all social media, etc. So you can find me if you want to find me. Um, so yes, I, it's written in the pen name, AJ King. That's a tribute to my dad, Brian King, who was the biggest loss of the 12 months. That No, it wasn't the biggest loss. It was one of many, but it was a, a really big loss for me. Um, so, yeah, I, I dealt with a hell of a lot in that, that time. It's taught me a hell of a lot, but it did take me 10 years to write the book. So finding the courage to actually 
go out and write a book, to sit down and tell your story. Because we've all got a story in us. I think you've probably, you'll have probably heard this in the, um, in the sort of interweb of news that every single one of us has a book inside of us. And I genuinely believe that. I think, you know, compared to some people, my life hasn't been difficult. But because a lot happened in a short period of time, I felt it was worthy of telling a story, a story that can take people from a place of feeling like a victim, which I have to say is what I felt like at that time when I was miserable. I was in victim mode, feeling sorry for myself for having an unhappy married fe marriage, feeling sorry for myself for not being happy in my job, feeling sorry for myself for overeating and, and gaining weight instead of taking responsibility for a lot of the things that were in my life that were not making me happy. And I think it's that moment when you can take responsibility and forgive that I ended up in that moment when I was at rock bottom, when there's nothing left. There only is forgiveness, gratitude and responsibility. And those were my foundations for rebuilding my life. And I tell more about that. I touch on that subject coming towards the end of the book, but tell more about that side of things in the next book, which I'm writing now. So, yeah, 10 years to sit down and write that story. But actually, do you know what happened? When I started writing the story and stopped thinking about it as a book, and really started thinking about it as a story, then I was able to easily write the story. I made a decision to write it in the third person as if I was speaking about somebody else, but made me the, my, the main character. The main character is called Mandy, funnily enough. And the first weekend that I sat to write that book, I sat down with the laptop on my knee. I'd had surgery. I'd had a surgery in 2019. Um, and it meant that I was off work for a while. So I had no excuses anymore. So I sat with my laptop on my knee and I started writing. And in the first weekend, I wrote 18,000 words of the book. Very little editing went on um, in those 18,000 words. They kind of just flowed. And then I stopped and wrote a timeline and wrote a structure for the rest of the book. So it's probably not the best way to start. Although, is it the best way to start? Possibly. Sit down and write your story. And if your story is hard to write about you, then write it in the third person. Make yourself the main character and write about this person that has experienced these things. I suppose those are my top tips as a published author now is to make sure that when you're writing about things you've experienced, when you're speaking about things that you've experienced, they're a whole lot easier to speak about, to write about, to teach people about, because you know like you know because they've happened to you. So that's what I would advise. If you're thinking of writing a book right now, if this is on your agenda or on your radar, be true to If it's a book about what's happened in your life, then it's easy to write about than maybe having to structure a plot and characters and a storyline, because that's what you would do if you didn't have the experience. The experience is the plot, the characters and the storyline. And whether you're writing a book about what's happened to you or whether you're writing a fictional book that's about something, an idea that you have, you still need a plot, characters and a storyline. So if you can apply it to your life and think about something that is complete fiction in that way, it becomes easier to sit down and start generating ideas. So I believe that anybody can do it. I've self-published this on Amazon at the moment. So you can buy this on Amazon. Um, but it will be being republished and the cover's being redone with a piece of my own artwork on it. Um, and that should be out by Austin McCauley. And it's going out in um, on Kindle, on audiobook, hard book, paperback. It's going into the National Library and to all of the universities in the UK. 
and uh, it will probably still be available on Amazon, but under a different publisher, and there'll be a whole marketing campaign pain behind it. So you're kind of getting this information um, in advance of probably what's going to be a relatively big marketing campaign when the book is republished by my new um, publishers, Austin McCauley. And they will then subsequently publish the next two books. So the next book's going to be called The Life I Created. And the one after that, funnily enough, was going to be called The Life I Lost. Because I said during the earlier part of this video that I lost my husband in April this year. But I've had a lot of spiritual intervention since then in lots of different ways and feel that he's still with me. It's almost like I haven't lost that life. So the third title is yet to be agreed. And we will see what that ends up being because that book is about where I am right now. So there's a whole trilogy story there of different, they're in the fiction category, but they probably should be in the self-help category. I've had nothing but five-star reviews right now. I've had messages from women who have said that this book has encouraged them to take control and change their life um, in one way or another. And that humbles me and fills me with, you know, real pride that, some words that came from my fingers can have that sort of impact on anybody. So I'm humbled, I'm overjoyed that it has had that impact, even if it's only on a small number right now because the book hasn't been properly marketed. Um, but I'm delighted to be able to speak about it in um, groups and anywhere, anybody that, that wants me to speak about it, I'm always come, happy to come along and talk about my book. Um, it's a work of experience, I suppose. It's a work about life. And it's a work about, do you know what? If I can do it, and if I can turn my life around, having had all that happen, then anybody can. So I'm really happy to have been talking to you this afternoon. I'm hoping that, that you've been able to watch all of this without it um, losing any of the signal because it looks like that's happened for at least one of you. And I hope that it's been of interest to you what I've had to say. I would love to take anybody's comments or answer any questions. I can't see any further comments right now. And maybe some of you have been commenting, but I've only got comments from like the first couple of minutes. So that's why I'm uh, keeping my fingers crossed and hoping that you've been able to see it all. I'm gonna go into the group right now and just see if there's any further comments, but feel free to ask me any questions at all about my book, my journey, or where, and there's a dog gonna bark any minute because my uh, older kids have just come in. They're not little kids anymore, they're big kids. So uh, if you hear dog barking, there we go, they're off. So that's a good time for me to go. It's been a delight being here with you and I will see you all again so very soon, I hope. Thank you very much.